Hello and good morning, CTS 267, Section 840 students for the Spring 2017 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This is the CCMP T-Shoot course, and this morning's video tutorial is actually going to be a uh, continuation of our conversation based off a question asked in class. I believe it was Evan who was trying to figure out how to match uh, and make his match case insensitive. So, in other words, uh, I'm just simply on a router here. This router is completely uh, clean. It's just been reloaded. In fact, let's put the, uh, we'll get the host name in here. And Evan's question was, if you were to say, like, show IP interface brief, but let's say uh, that you're not certain uh, of the capitalization in the search stream, because typically if I were to say, uh, show run and pipe it to include fast ethernet, right it would come back with nothing even if I were to try to trim down my search to just fast you'll see that it's not matching right we're, so we're doing the include and it isn't working well what if I were to change it to begin would that help right so let's begin the search where we find the pattern fast and as you can see iOS isn't matching anything right it's not actually able to differentiate uh, between case or I should say more accurately, it's actually differentiating between case, whereas it looks for a lowercase f instead of an uppercase f. So if I was to rerun that last command but put in the proper case, you can see that now it does begin at fast Ethernet. Or same thing with the include command. If I were to look at the include command, you can see that we see the two uh, fast Ethernet interfaces. And so one of the ways that you can deal with this is you could create an alias uh, using a regular expression match. Uh, and we talked a little bit about regular expressions uh, in the previous courses, but let's take a look and see what that looks like. So if I knew that it was fast Ethernet, and I you know, just want to match on the fast part, but I don't know if it's an uppercase F or a lowercase F, I could say show run include and then we're going to use the brackets here I'm going to say capital F or lowercase f right so it could be either one of those two characters and this kind of gets into sort of a little uh, unixy regular expression kind of syntax but you can see that that would actually work right because again what we're saying here is match on the literal string, right? So we're trying to match a string of characters where the first character that we're trying to match could be a capital F or it could be a lowercase f. And so in that instance, we end up matching the lines that we're looking for. And so what you could do if you were simply interested in matching or if this is a command and again I'm just going to use some uh, basic commands here to get the point across so like let's say that you run that command all the time that you are very interested in seeing how many fast Ethernet interfaces you have configured or actually let's do this show IP interface brief right so this is a common command show IP interface brief do show IP interface brief there we go. So we see all of these interfaces here, right? Well, let's say we've got these loopbacks created. What if I wanted to match on the loopbacks? Well, what I could do is I could create what's called an alias. Now, the alias is going to be saved in the running configuration. So when I uh, do a write mem or a copy running config startup config, when I reload the router and the router comes back up, the alias will be in the running configuration so I could come back and access this alias uh, at a later time so let's say I want to see all the interfaces but only the loopback interfaces and I want to catch all the information uh, associated with those loopbacks so what I could do is I could say alias and actually while we're here uh, one of the it's not a drawback it's actually sort of an advantage with the aliases over what we're going to be getting into here in a second which is the shell processing uh, and how we can kind of turn this router into a unix friendly router uh, is that the aliases have this advantage where we can actually specify uh, the different privilege not so much privilege levels but the different areas within the privilege levels that you can execute the command so if i said alias exec 
and we'll start with alias exec because this is you typically see this very common uh, and let's go ahead and we're going to call the alias um, loops I'll just say loops okay so what is the command that we want to run when we type in loops well show IP interface brief pipe include and let's say that we didn't know if it was a uppercase L or a lowercase L whoops and we want to grab that loop back right so I'm gonna hit enter so now if I were to say do show run include alias you can see that we've got this alias created we actually used a regular expression in the alias and the alias name again is just simply loops so when I type loops and I hit enter what happens it says invalid input detected so why do you think that is and again this kind of goes back to what we just said about this value right here so I say that I'm creating an alias that will be available to me in privilege exec so when I run this command loops or I should say the alias loops if I'm not in privilege exec the command is not going to be found right like we just saw so just like any other commands that are in a different level so here I'm in uh, the global config section right not in the privilege I, I, not so much in not in privilege exec I'm in privilege exec but I'm not at the exec mode I'm in the global config mode so if I were to say do loops and hit enter just like a command that you would run uh, from the exec mode right when you first get into the privilege exec mode you can say do and then the command will run but when I'm in global config it's not going to run so the question then becomes well okay well what if I want to be able to run that from global config well that's actually rather quite simple so we come back to the command and we simply change the configuration area to configure so global config so now I've got two aliases right both with the same name loops but do show run include alias I can run them I could run the alias from either global config or from the exec mode when I come into privilege exec so let's see what if I type loops and you can see it didn't run why didn't it run exactly because remember we're in global config and show right the command show is an exec mode command so how would we fix our alias really straightforward we come back and I say do show IP interface brief right because I have to take into account that we're running this from global configuration mode so now when I say loops we get the exact output that we were looking for so do show run include alias just like when I say show run I have to put the do uh, in front of the show run and so you can see that it overwrote the alias that we had uh, that was incorrect so now I've got it from this mode right from global config mode. well what if you wanted to be able to run that same command maybe you're gonna be I'm an in interface loopback let's say 100 and I want to be able to run the command from interface configuration mode so if I say loops what happens exactly it doesn't work so how can we fix this well I can come back to the alias and I can actually say that when I am in interface configuration mode that this command is going to be available now remember I still need the do because if I was in interface configuration I can't say show IP interface brief right so if I was in interface loopback 100 and I said show IP interface brief we're gonna get an error right it's not gonna work because we're in interface configuration mode however I've got the do in front of my alias command here so now when I say loops take a look at that and so now we end up seeing the command output that we're looking for so we've seen three different ways we can do this with aliases so do show run include alias and again it all depends on where you want to have access to that alias if you want to have access 
In the interface mode, you would set it up like this. For the global config mode, you would use configure. If you just want it from the privilege exec mode, you would just use exec, right? So this is a very easy way to create shortcuts to commands that you run all the time, right? And maybe uh, if you do show IP interface brief, if you don't want to just trim it down to the loopbacks, how would you do that? Let's say we only wanted to do it from privilege exec, and we're going to call it show IP interface brief, or how about sib, show IP interface brief. And so then I would simply say show IP interface brief. If I'm in privilege exec mode and I say sib, there we go, show IP interface brief. So it's a great way to sort of trim down uh, the amount of syntax that you have to type in in order to get the commands to run. So now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this, this case insensitive matching. So if you didn't know where in the string of characters, right, so like this fast Ethernet here, if you didn't know that it was a capital F and a capital E, um, and that was what you were trying to match on, and again, this is kind of a, this may seem like a silly example, but it kind of gets the point, uh, drives the point home. So if I were to say show run include, if I wanted to ensure that the entire match was case sensitive, I would have to do something like this, right? F A, and then, and you can see I don't do this often <laughs> or at all because uh, you wouldn't do it like this. I'm going to show you a quicker way to do it. And then let's say we knew it was T, right? And so then that's going to match. But, you know, the, the legwork behind trying to figure out or trying to put in the syntax to say capital F or lowercase f, followed by an uppercase A or a lowercase a, followed by an uppercase S or a lowercase s, right? You can see it kind of gets silly because this is definitely uh, not a good use of your time. So how can we fix this? Well, we can turn on, and this is basically how you turn your Cisco router into a Unix-friendly box. And here's what I mean. So if I were to type uname-a, right? Now, that is a Unix command. So, and I don't know if I have up. We do. So here is my Mac, right, which sort of runs the Mac flavor of uh, Unix. And let's go ahead and say, what are we doing here? Let's clear this out. All right, so if I was to say uname minus A, right? So this is a Unix command. And I'm just going to say Unix. I'm not going to say Linux. I'll just say Unix. So this is a Unix command, right? And what does it do? It shows me the kernel version. It shows me the name of the system. It shows me the release information, right? So if you turn shell processing on your Cisco router, you'll have access to those commands. You notice I type the command, and this is really important. So what do we see here? It says the command you've entered is available in the iOS SH. However, the shell is currently disabled. You can enable it on this terminal by, by typing term shell. So what if I say term shell? Oops, sorry, term shell. And then I say uname dash a. We'll take a look at that. So for this terminal, I've turned on shell processing. So now I have access to a series of Unix commands on my Cisco iOS router. In fact, I'm actually going to show you how to create functions, uh, which you can create in any kind of shell scripting language that are similar to aliases, right, but are going to give us access to these Unix-like commands. Now, remember, term shell turns it on for just the terminal that we're in, and we saw that. But if you'd like to turn it on for all terminals, you just type in shell processing full. Now, there's additional information in the man command, and the man stands for manual pages, right? And so this kind of goes back to to Unix 101. And the man pages were the original source uh, of help documents, right? Of trying to get assistance with respect to what the commands can do. So you see here, we've got this man ios.sh. So let me type in man ios.sh and hit enter. And take a look at this is like a phenomenal amount of information, a phenomenal value of information here talks about it's an add-on feature and take a look here we can type man compatibility gives us an overview variables how do we use variables scripting 
how do I create a script? And again, we're on a Cisco I. This is an ISR G1 1841 running 15.3 code, and I've now sort of unlocked Unix capabilities, right? The expression syntax, uh, how to create loops, functions, quoting. So we've unlocked a huge treasure trove here of Unix-like commands. So the question then becomes, okay, well, that's great, but how do I see or how do I know what commands are available to me? So let's go ahead and say show shell environment, and I believe that's it. Yeah, show shell environment, and so we get down. You can see they've got some variables here, but there's a function. Okay, you can see the name of the function is Cisco SMI macro, but we get down to these other functions and take a look here. We've got the cat command, right? So output data from a pipe or a file to the terminal. We've got the cut command, allows us to trim down the fields, the echo command, false fetch, and most importantly, and this is what we were talking about on Thursday, was the grep command. So the man command, remember man for manual pages on grep. If I'm interested in seeing what that global and grep stands for global regular expression print, right? So we're going to be matching a pattern. I type in man grep and take a look. I've got full access to the grep description, right, as to what it does and the options that are available. So in that example that we used earlier when I said show run include and I didn't know if it was capital F or lowercase f all I'd have to do now is say grep and we can see right here I now this is going to ignore the case for everything so watch what I do here F A S T E T H E and obviously you're not going to be searching on that pattern but this is to drive home the fact that that dash I that's in there says I don't care about the case that was used in the search. I am matching on whether it is uppercase or lowercase. So if I were to change this to all lowercase, it's going to match. Because again, grep with the minus i option says I am ignoring the case of the string you are telling me to look for. So in other words, I'm going to match a lowercase f or a capital F, a lowercase a or a capital A, and that's all done for us here with, with that minus I option. Now, a quick note. Remember we said we could type in shell, and I'll do the question mark here, environment. Uh, actually, we don't want to get there yet. Sorry. Let me take a step back. So what if I were to log off, right? So if I log off, log off the console, and then log back in, Right, so I'm back. I'm logged back in, and I say, "Oh, that's right. I want to run that that same shell command again." So how would I do that? I would say, "Show run grep minus i fast," and we'll put in all of Ethernet. Ethernet. Now, is that going to work? It's not. And why didn't it? And if you saw, I got a little ahead of myself up there when we went to the load and the save. And the reason it didn't is because I logged off and then logged back in. And so I terminated the shell environment in which I was working. So remember the command that we saw earlier, which was that shell processing full. Well, when I said shell, and I'll do the question mark here, you can see unrecognized commands. So let's get back into global config. If I say shell, uh, and let's do processing and full. Now remember, this was the command that we could issue to turn the shell processing, processing on on all lines. So I say shell processing full. We'll come back here and let's rerun that show run. In, oops, sorry, show run include. Show run grep minus I FAST. And there we go. So now we're back into that shell environment. We have access to the shell environment. What if I want to run the command from global config? Can I say show run, pipe it to, in, I'm sorry, I keep saying include, grep minus i fast? No, I can't. We, we just basically get back the command that comes after the pipe. So what if I were to say do show run, pipe grep? And so when we compare and contrast uh, the shell processing environment 
with the alias, one of the things that we see is that when we go into global config, we go to run that grep command, which is in our shell, but it's, it doesn't appear to be available in global config. However, if I back out and say show run grep minus I fast, it works, right? And so the alias definitely has an advantage because the alias, we can configure it specifically, sort of turn it on and off, if you will, in global config or in the interface configuration mode, which we saw both of those and how those would work. Uh, whereas with the shell processing environment, we get it here from privilege exec, but not when we transition into global config. And that's even when we run the command properly by uh, preceding it with the do option, right? In order to be able to run it from that global config mode, it's not available. All right, so we've seen how you turn shell processing on. In fact, uh, if I was to say dir, and let's see if we've got some files in here. So this tech support file, right? You can see I've got this tech support file. Well, man cat, just like in Unix, I can concatenate out a file to the screen. So if I was to say cat, and this may take a second or two because you can see the file is uh, rather large, but let's go ahead and say copy and paste uh, and hit enter, right? And what's going to happen is now it's going to concatenate that file out to the screen for me, right? And let's see if we can do a control shift six and kill this. Now we may be stuck letting it run. All right, so basically this is going to run. Now, if I wanted to create a pipeline, right? And in other words, a pipeline is where I'm running some of these Unix commands, but I want to connect the commands together. The question becomes, can I do that? Can I cap this file out and then maybe grep for a string that's going to occur in this file? And so we'll give this a second or two here to finish up. I wanted to make sure we had some good, uh, some good output, and this is definitely quite a bit of output here. So in fact, let me pause. I'll wait for this to finish, and we'll be right back. OK, so we're back after a pretty lengthy run there. So let's say that I wanted to go into the tech support file, right? And I say cat uh, tech support. And what if I want to grep on fast Ethernet? So we hit Enter, and let's see what happens. So again, we're sending the output, right? And this is sort of, again, kind of a, the Unix 101 is I'm concatenating the file out to the screen, right? Or I'm, I'm concatenating this file, which would go to the screen, but I've put a pipe character in here, which means I'm sending the output of this command to become the input for the grep command. And take a look at what happens. We match the two fast Ethernet interfaces. It listed them out. So we don't see all of this output to the screen. We're able to trim things down. Uh, and so what would be a good thing, a good way to take a look at this? Well, what if I were to say I want to see that tech support? I want to, I'm looking for errors, for any output where maybe there's the text error, right? And so here we can see real quickly from an interface perspective. We could look at this and see, okay, do we have any receive errors uh, or input errors, etc. Right. So, again, uh, very easy way to leverage these commands to really dig through some of the uh, output. That way, you don't have to sit there and fish through line by line. And so, speaking of that, right. So, let's say that I wanted to know how many lines are in this file. Well, the word count function exists in the shell in the full shell or the iOS shell. So we say we're going to cat the tech support command out and I'm simply that wc-l is counting each of the lines. There are 2172 lines in that file. Right? So not a very easy alternative without using the cat command along with the wc-l makes it very very simple. In fact, there's another command that will well, actually, that's going to print line numbers. So if I was to say grep minus I on fast, and then let's do this. I think it's NL, number the lines, where it will actually put a line number. There you go. So, But not the line number where it appears in the output, but it's numbering the lines for me, you know, one, two, three, four. And it's the same thing. If I were to say show run, and I wanted to number 
the lines in the output of the show run command, there you go. So this would be an easy way to do a show run if you wanted to send it to a colleague and say, right, okay, line 102. On line 105, that's what I have. And so this is a very easy way to have this output sent to the screen uh, so that we can see the line numbers. All right, so I talked about functions, right? So if I was to say, and let's see if there's a man page on function. So there it is, fantastic. So we see we've got functions, how to use and write functions. And it's very, very simple. So remember, with aliases, those are going to be in the running config. They're there. And I can create a simple function. So that show IP interface brief, and let's say show IP interface brief. And let's say I don't want to see uh, the unassigned. So the first thing I always do is I test my command out. So show IP interface brief and then grep. And remember, uh, we can look at the man page for grep, but minus V is the negation, right? So we're going to match everything except lines that have the string UNASS, and I might as well put it all in there, unassigned, right? So test the command, right? See if it does what you expect it to do. And now let's go ahead and create the function. So the function would be called, um, I'll say ints, I-N-T-S. So we do the open parent, close parent, and then the open brace. And take a look at that. It drops us sort of just like if you're familiar with Unix or Linux, when it drops you into the PS2 prompt, right? You go PS1 is your main prompt. So we would say that this R3 pound would be PS1. And then it drops us into the PS2 prompt here, where now we have to complete our function, which is going to be simply that command right there. And again, it's nice to run through the command to make sure that it produces the output that you're looking for before you do the function. And I could have other commands in here. Let's say, um, let's see, how about a, well, actually, let's use sleep. So you can put the sleep command in here. Common, uh, very common Unix command. We'll say sleep for three seconds. And then we're going to say show run and grep minus I uh, for... What were we grabbing for? Fast Ethernet. All right. Now, so this is sort of a significant advantage. And the reason I put multiple lines in here is this doing this in an alias would be pretty tough, right? It's a little more difficult than it is doing it in a function. So a function, and because aliases exist uh, in Unix as well, right? So you can create aliases, but when you get into more complex uh, type command sets that you wish to run, that's kind of where you make the decision, yeah, you know, maybe I should create a function. The other difference is the functions are preloaded into memory, right? Uh, whereas the aliases on the Unix side, they're not, they're read uh, from disk. So we'll hit enter, and you can see we get that close parent there down at the bottom. That was our last command that we entered in. Now we're back to sort of the PS1 prompt, the main prompt. So what happens when I type ints? So we get the show IP interface brief output. We had the three second sleep command and then it went out and it ran a show run and it grepped on fast ethernet. So again, run that again and you can see we slept for three seconds. So there's one, two, three, and then off we go, right? And so that's how easy it is to create functions uh, that you can use on a daily basis. Now, what happens when I type exit? So I log off the console or log off from the terminal. And I decide, yeah, I'm going to come back in. All right, I really quickly need to see that information. And I type in ints. You can see I do not have no IP domain name lookup configured on here yet. So... But the, the point here is that what, what's happening? Was the function available to me? No, it wasn't. Because I got logged, I, I logged myself off, right? So that instance of that user login on the console line, I no longer have access to that. So how, what's one way that I can get around this? Well, let's create the functioning. And let's first, let's see. Uh, if I were to say show run uh, grep dash I, Remember, we did shell processing full. Before when we did uh, the shell terminal, what happened? It allowed, when we logged off and logged back in, the shell functionality was gone. With shell processing full, 
you can see it's still here. It's still enabled. So if I were to say shell run include shell, you can see shell processing full. So the shell processing capability, even when I logged off and logged back in, when I did shell processing full, it's there, right? It's not a transient thing where it's good for that login and then as soon as I exit out, it's gone. You can see here with shell processing full, it's available to me. But I lost my function. So how do we sort that out? How would we get around that? Well, let's go ahead and say function ints. And we did a show IP interface brief. And we did a grep minus V on unassigned. Right? Because we don't want to match lines that have unassigned. And this is similar when you do the show IP interface brief. What do you do on the iOS side? Exactly. You say exclude unassigned. But then what if you wanted it to sleep for four seconds and then you wanted to come back and there was another command. How about a show run, um, I'm sorry, show run grep. We want to do a case insensitive search for any fast Ethernet interfaces that may be there, right? Uh, and that is going to be it for that command. So now when I type in ints, you can see we get that show IP interface brief, grep-v for unassigned, or we exclude the string unassigned, and then it slept for four seconds, and then we get our output. So I've created this environment, and I want to make sure that when I log off um, and come back in, that this environment, this shell environment, has been saved. So how do we do that? So we say, oops, sorry, let's get this right. So I say shell environment. If I do the question mark, you can see we have there's a load and a save. I simply save it off to Flash, and I'll just call it Travis.sh, right? And this will be my environment that's been saved off. Well, what if I wanted to cat it? What's in there? So that's my environment. So that's what I've saved off, right? And you can see there's the function that it was unique to my environment. If I was to say show, or I'm sorry, uh, shell environment and not load or save. Hold on one second. I want to do, I'm drawing a blank here. I don't think it's show shell. Oh, it is show, I'm sorry, show shell environment. So show shell environment, take a look. Because in the current environment, right, along with all these other things I have, it has merged that function into the shell environment. So now let's do a quick test here. If I say ints, we see that that works. We know it works. It's in the current shell environment. So, but that is a special, like it's like an alias I've created. But if I want to get access to it, if I type exit, and then I come back in, and I say show shell environment, it's gone, right? Because again, that was part of that login environment. The shell processing full makes sure that when I come back in, I've got sort of the default, if you will, but I want access to that Travis.sh. So we say cat Travis.sh, right? I want to make sure that this becomes part of the shell environment that I'm currently in. And you already saw that if we can save it, I can actually load it because we've saved it off. I can load this environment right back in now I need to make the call. Am I replacing my current shell environment, this process that I'm logged into right now, or do I just want to merge it? Well, we just want to merge it in, right? We don't want to overwrite what might already be in there. So I'm going to type in merge. So now when I say shell show, show, excuse me, show shell environment and hit enter, you can see that we merged our functions right back into the environment. And so... Uh, this becomes a very handy uh, little feature where you enable the shell processing uh, and then you can create functions that you just simply load when you log in. Now, there's also a, a way to auto-magically do this and that would be with the, uh, the shell init. So like, let's say you log off, I log back in, I say shell... Um, show shell environment and you can see it's gone right because again it merged in because it was part of that login shell it was a custom function i had created i log off that process is terminated and then the function the custom function is removed now we still have the file travis.sh that is still there but 
it kind of, you know, do you want to, every time you log in, do I want to have to type in uh, shell environment load flash colon Travis, you know, so this becomes kind of a pain, right? And then say we're going to merge it in. So if I want to make sure that every time I come and I, I log in, uh, from the console that this gets loaded in. And again, this would load in for everybody, right? I would say shell init, and then uh, the file name to be executed. I believe we need the flash in there, travis.sh. Is that not it? Okay, so let's do shell init, and I should be able to say travis.sh. No, oh, I'm sorry, I have to put, forgot to put the file misread the uh, the command there. So shell init Travis file flash. I knew I needed the flash in there. Travis.sh. So there we go. So if I do no exec, it's going to only store the init file name at this point. Load init file environment at next reboot. Well, I don't want that. I'm going to say shell init file flash colon Travis.sh. Because let's say there's a series of functions, right, that you want everybody that they when they log in to have access to it. So I'll type in show run include shell. And now we see the shell processing full. We also see the init file. So show shell environment. Is it there? All right, so there's my function init. So now I'm going to log out. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to log back in. We're going to go to privilege exec. And I'm going to say show shell environment. Is it there? And there it is, because I've created, include shell, I've created this config line that it's going to initialize for me automatically, right, the merging of that function or, you know, functions, plural, that I have inside that file, travis.sh. So if you've got uh, functions that you want other admin, you could call it admin.sh, right, for administrator functions, and have it load that file. So the question becomes, well, that's great, but can I load multiple? Like, let's say I want to have shell in it, and actually, let's save. Let's do this. We're going to say shell environment save, and we'll save it out to flash colon, we'll say admin.sh, right? So now when I type dir, I've got Travis.sh, and let's suspend reality. Let's say that Travis, you know, these are Travis's, and then these are a totally different set of functions that only the uh, that the administrators are using. Well, what if I want that to load when everyone logs in? Uh, so how would we do that? So can I have both Travis, shell init file, flash, colon, admin.sh? And... I'm sorry, did I need to shell init? Did I leave out file flash colon admin.sh? I must have, I, oh, I typed, <laughs> mistyped uh, flash there. So now I've typed the second command in. Well, what if I say do show run and how about grep for flash? Right? Why isn't it working? You've got it. I'm in global config. So uh, show run grep on shell. So you can only init and pull in one file. And that's what that's the point we're trying to make here is that, you know, you can individually pull them in, right? So then I could, as I'm logged in here, right, if I wanted to say shell environment load, right, I can pull in the Travis.sh. Oops, sorry. Travis.sh, and we're going to merge it. Right, so I can I can individually pull them in, but the init is going to allow me to to simply auto magically have a single file loaded in, right? All right, well this is going to wrap up our tutorial on. We talked about aliases. We did do a little work on aliases, but that was to give us the background uh, and sort of the compare and contrast as to do you want to do uh, the shell processing full again? It certainly makes those case insensitive searches easier. Uh, and gives you access to uh, a whole host of Unix commands. And you can see we go down here, you got the uname command, true, tail, sort, sleep, read. And again, if you're interested in what the commands do, simply type in man uname, and it tells you what it does. So over here on the 
on the Cisco side of the house, the iOS shell, right? It certainly trims down the version information. When you do the show version, you get all kinds of information, but just uname a might be something you want to do uh, rather quickly. And again, gives you some limited Unix-like functionality, but definitely, as you can see here, definitely some useful functionality that'll allow you, if you're familiar with uh, Unix command set, definitely give you some additional flexibility that iOS uh, proper doesn't necessarily provide. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, definitely get out there, turn on shell processing full, and have fun. I'll see you guys in two weeks.